how many essential ACT math strategies can we fit into a five minute video? We're about to find out. This section includes 60 questions in 60 minutes. Hopefully your math skills tell you that means you have a minute per question. The questions ascend in difficulty from easy to hard, and that means a couple of different things with a couple of different implications for you as the test taker. The first is that you want to work quickly and accurately on the first 30 questions. They aren't too hard and they count towards your score exactly as much as the hard questions do. When you're on your ACT game, you'll get the first 30 plus questions all correct. Second, the difficulty of the questions increases in a couple of different ways. Later questions might require more steps to get from the information to the answer. They might also require more sophisticated problem solving techniques. They might also be more advanced because they're drawn from your more advanced math curriculum, like your pre-calculus class. Here's the thing though, those difficult questions won't have all of those traits. The questions that test higher level math concepts might be on a topic that you learned really recently, like for example, the graph of a trig function. If you know that topic well, that's not going to be a hard question for you. So if time gets short at the end of the ACT math test, feel free to glance at the last five to 10 math questions to see if there are any where you know the topic well enough to answer the question quickly. And do those problems first. The content of the math covers everything from second grade up through pre-calculus and even a little bit of statistics. Students tend to be worried about the advanced stuff, but I would recommend you start by worrying about the elementary school stuff. Those questions are easy, but you wanna make sure you have your techniques for fractions, percentage, and ratio questions down cold so you can work through those questions quickly and accurately. Next, you should use a graphing calculator on the ACT. There are many advantages to having a decent calculator on the test, including the ability to store programs that will help solve ACT questions in seconds. One of the best advantages of the calculator is that there are questions that you can solve simply by typing the problem exactly as written into the calculator and pressing enter. If you don't have a graphing calculator and you think that they're too expensive, I have good news for you. Go to ebay.com and search for Texas Instruments graphing calculators. I got one for 10 bucks, including shipping. The nicer ones cost a bit more than that, but they're still a steal compared to the retail price. Your college admissions game is worth that 10 to $60 investment. Oh, and please put fresh batteries in your calculator before the test. ACT math is frequently what I call a math vocabulary test. If you know the terms going in, you'll be really successful. It's not about complicated calculations, in other words. It's about knowing which calculations to make. We don't have time during this video to go through a bunch of math vocabulary, but just know that you should study math vocab because you'll do a hell of a lot better if you do. Oh, don't show up at the test not knowing what SOHCAHTOA means. ACT math is also a reading test. A lot of the questions are way overwritten, featuring up to 75 words that conceal a really basic math problem. Know that the test is, in a way, just trying to test your patience. When you get to one of those long questions, remind yourself that the point is to see if you can fight your way through the complicated wording to find the math problem. You can, so do it. Use all of the tools available to you. It's a multiple choice math test, so your work is not being graded. That means you can use the answer choices. One word of caution about using the answer choices though, you don't have time to do that on all of the questions. Try to front solve as many questions as you can and use the answer choices as a backup strategy when you can't. You also can and should plug in numbers wherever possible. When you see a question that's written exclusively in terms of variables, like if A is less than zero is less than B, supply your own numbers. That will typically be faster and more accurate than trying to solve using abstract reasoning. Lastly, every test has a couple of problems that will give you a complicated formula. And most students fear these questions. You should get excited. When they give you a formula, all you have to do is drop some numbers into the equation, using your calculator, by the way, and the answer will be right there. So don't fear the complicated looking formula problems. Drop some numbers into that equation and press enter. Boom, five minutes of ACT math. Go get them.